Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the best case runtime for this function here. We did in the sessions, we did the worst case runtime, uh, but we didn't do the best case. So we're gonna take a look at that here, but it's a very similar strategy that we're going to use. If we recall, I'm not gonna do everything again, but the way that we thought about the worst case, the worst case is the maximum of all the runtimes over all inputs. Um, and so the way we did this was we broke the function up into pieces. It's a while loop, has an if part and an else part. And we found out that the most that the, or, or the, the if part cannot execute more than m times, and the else part cannot execute more than root m root m uh, minus one over two times. And so we said that the worst case is going to be less than or equal to m plus root m minus one over two plus one for the initialization, right? So the most that this part could execute plus the most that this part could execute plus one for the initialization. Um, and this is in uh, big O of M. And again, I'm skipping most of the details. Um, and so that proved that it was in big O of M. The way we proved that it was in uh, omega of M, omega of M and therefore in theta of M was we found an input A is one, 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 just a, a, a big list of ones, um, which which caused the if part of the loop to execute m times and then terminate. So again, we got one for the initialization. This thing runs m times, the else doesn't run at all. And so it executes an m plus one steps, which is omega of m. And so the idea with the, uh, and, and this the reason that this proved that uh, the, the worst case was omega of m was that the worst case is the maximum of all the runtimes over all inputs and the maximum of a set of numbers is always bigger than or equal to any one of the numbers. So if we find one, we find one input that gives us a runtime, which is omega of m, then that means that the worst case is also omega of m. And that's what let us find out that the worst case was theta of m. It was omega and big O. And so we're going to do the similar thing for the, for the best case, sort of uh, almost parallel reasoning, which is I'm going to say, okay, what is the, so the best case is the, the minimum of all the runtimes over all the possible inputs of length m, and it's going to be as a function of m. And so the idea is I'm going to think, okay, before I was like, okay, well, this one can do it. At what is the most that each part can do individually? And then I add them and the total has to be less than or equal to that. Now I'm going to think what out of, uh, what is the least that each part could do before uh, in, in order for the one of the conditions to terminate, right? Or one of the conditions to be violated so the while loop terminates. The while loop has two conditions. And I said, this one can go at most m times before violating this. This one can go at most root m minus one times before violating this. So together or not more than that, it doesn't necessarily have to be able to go exactly that many times, but many times, but um, I can have it uh, no more than m iterations before this terminates, no more than root m minus one over two before this terminates. And so I add them and I get an upper bound on the total number of iterations. Uh, now what I'm thinking is, okay, how many times does either one of these have to iterate before, if I want, my goal now is to get it to terminate as quickly as possible, find the best case, right? How many times does this one have to run? Does the if part have to run before it, uh, in order to get it to terminate? Well, it's going to have to run m times, right? If I want to, this condition to be violated, I want i to be less than, or, or i to be bigger than or equal to 2m, and i starts out at 1, and it gets multiplied by 2 every iteration. Well, this thing has to run at least m times in order for this to work. Uh, what about this? This one, it looks like it's going to have to run at least root m minus one over two times. We want to be careful about this though, because it involves it involves um, a floor function, right? Uh, and so, but this this one looks more promising. I think that I can get this one to execute or to to um, violate the condition and get the while loop to fail to execute uh, quicker. I can I can do it in, in fewer than m steps. And so let me let me think about this. Let's let's think about this. Um, uh, the the so j is initially equal to the floor of the floor of root m uh, and sorry the floor of uh, yeah square root of m and then so and we when we found the worst case we said that this is this is less than or equal to square root of m if i want to find the best case right now i'm thinking i'm thinking of how uh how can i get a lower bound on j Right. I'm thinking I, I want to I want to figure out this thing has to run at least this many times, at least so many times in order for this condition to be violated. Um, and so what I'm going to think about is, is when is J definitely going to be bigger than one? When will J keep being bigger than one? Not how many times do I have to go to get uh, what, what is the most um, number of times I can run before J is smaller than one. Now I think uh, how many how many times do I have to run it in order to get J 
less than one? Or when will J, when will J still be bigger than one? Let me figure that out is the idea. When will J still be bigger than one? If I haven't gone enough times, J will still be bigger than one. And I know that I have to, I have to go more. This is how I get a lower bound, right? This is how I figure out what the best case is, is by finding out this thing has to run at least this many times. My best case is it has to go at least this many times in order for one of the conditions, the condition that can, that can I can fail to satisfy or I can violate with fewer steps. Uh, and so the idea is I'm going to say, okay, just like just like we said that the square root of uh, or floor of root m is less than or equal to root m, I can also say that the floor of root m is bigger than or equal to root m minus one, right? And that's again because the floor, right? The floor, if this is an integer, if this is z plus one. And that's said minus one, the floor of an integer, or said the floor of a number, if this is x, and this is, I can write uh, x is equal to z plus r with zero less than or equal to r, less than one, I know that the floor of x is less than or equal to x, right? It's less than or equal to, so because floor of x is z, it's the next integer down, floor of x is z, it gets rid of the r, it's, uh, it's less than or equal to x, less than or equal to x, but it's also... It's also bigger than or equal to, this would be x minus one, right? X minus one jumps me down by one. So now I'm in between z minus one and z, and that's less than or equal to z. So I'm gonna use the exact same inequality reasoning, thinking about thinking about uh, floor functions in the exact same way, jumping down to the next integer. Now to get an upper or a, a lower bound on z, say that, or on, wow, a lower bound on j. Say that j has to be bigger than or equal to, bigger than or equal to, um, root m minus one when it when it starts right it starts it's initialized at uh, floor of root m that's bigger than or equal to root m minus one so again after what one iteration um, we're going to have j is equal to floor of root m minus two which is bigger than or equal to root m minus one minus two we can keep doing this after k iterations we're going to have j is bigger than or equal to root m minus one minus two k. And now I'm going to think, okay, this and this is going to tell me what is what k has to be, what is the least that k can be. Right? Before we were thinking what is the most that k can be for the worst case, right? The most that it can be before it terminates is something. Now we're thinking, what is the least that it has to be in order to terminate? Well, in order it will terminate when j is as long as j is not, sorry, it will it will keep running as long as j is bigger than one. So I'm going to say, when is k, what values of k, for what values of k will j keep being bigger than 1? Well, j is bigger than or equal to root m minus 1 minus 2k. And so I want to figure out, when is this thing bigger than 1? Because if root m minus 1 minus 2k is bigger than 1, then j will be bigger than 1. And the list will keep, or the, the while loop will keep going. It will keep iterating. It won't stop. So I want to figure out, what is the least that k can be before it stops, right? This is going to give me my best case, the smallest number of iterations I have to go in order for this thing to stop. That will be the, the best case runtime, the minimum of all the runtimes, right? This will give me this will give me um, a lower bound, a lower bound on what um, the the uh, runtime has to be, because we're going to we're going to say that okay, as long as k is less than uh, oh, wow, my thing is sorry about that. I really don't know how to stop that. Um, the idea is we're going to figure out that k has to be less than or equal to something. And as long as k is less than or equal to that thing, this it's going to keep it's going to keep running, right? And so this is going to give me a lower bound on that. It's going to say that the I have to do at least this many before it stops. That means the best case can't be less than that, right? The best case can't be less than the least number of uh, basic operations I have to do to get this thing to terminate. So we get a lower bound on this. Okay, and the, again, how do we do this? Same thing as we did with the worst case, we just solve for k. Root m minus 1 minus 2k is bigger than 1 if and only if root m minus 1 is bigger than 1 plus 2k if and only if root m minus 2 is bigger than 2k if and only if root m minus 2 over 2 is bigger than k. So that's saying... That k in order in order uh, so if if root m minus two over two is bigger than k, then j is going to be j is going to be bigger than one, and the thing will keep going, right? That means that if I wanted to stop, if I want if I want j bigger uh, less than or equal to one, so the loop terminates terminates. 
um, I need k to be less than or equal to root m minus 2 over 2, which is, of course, this is uh, in omega, or this, sorry, is in, um, it's going, we're going to find out it's in omega, but this is in big O of root of root m. Um, actually, sorry, no, this is not what I'm doing. This, it's going to also be in big O of root. This one is in, this one, it is in big O of root m, but we're all, right now we're pointing out that it's, this is in omega of, of root m. Right? What I'm saying is that th this k is has to be less than or equal to um, root m minus 2 over 2, right? In order, uh, sorry, wow, this is, that's why I'm getting confused myself. k has to be bigger than or equal to. I just copied the thing over from here, sorry. If k is less than root m minus 2 over 2, then it's going to keep running. So we need k to be bigger than or equal to root m minus 2 over 2 in order for this to keep going. Right. So sorry, let me erase this and, and come back and reason my way back to this because it's it's the end of a very long day and I'm confused more than usual. K has to be bigger than or equal to root M minus two over two in order to get the thing to terminate. Right. K has to be at least that. And the the best case runtime, right, is the the minimum of all the possible runtimes. So if it has to be um, at least if if uh, K has to be at least this big, that means that the best case, right? The best case has to be at least that big. I can't, I can't get the thing to terminate in less than root m minus two over two steps. So that means that the best case, the best case, case has to be at least root m minus two over two, um, which is in, there we go. I did it right here. I'm not trusting myself. At this time of day, root it ha that is in uh, omega of m, right? The best case has to be bigger than or equal to root m minus two over two, which is omega of root m. So that establishes that the best case is the best case is in omega of root m, right? Has to be at least at least root m minus two over two. Can't stop in less than that number of basic operations. Um, and there's also the plus one, but again, we don't care about we don't care about constants um, for this. So. So that's the omega. What about the theta? Or what? Sorry, what about the big O to get the theta? Right. Well, same thing we did with the worst case. So uh, the worst case was the maximum of all the runtimes over every over every possible input. So we found one that runs in a, at exactly m plus one, which is which is um, omega of m. And so the maximum of all of them. If I have one that runs in uh, omega of m time then the, the, the maximum of all those has to be bigger than or equal to that, right? The maximum has to be bigger than or equal to m plus one, because I, I found one that runs in exactly m plus one, the max is bigger than or equal. So the max is bigger than or equal to m plus one, which is, which is omega of m. I'm going to do the opposite thing for the best case. I'm going to say, okay, the best case is less than or equal to any particular one, right? So if I can, want, if I can find one that runs in, that runs in, big O of root M time, then I can, then I will be able to say that the best case is less than or equal to that. So if the best case case is less than or equal to any particular one, any particular, any, any particular runtime on any particular input. So I need an input that runs in big O of m time, or big O of root m time. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a is, well, it can just be like anything, anything bigger, it could be all nines, it could be all fives, it could be all threes, whatever it is. As long as the thing is bigger than two, as long as they're all bigger than two, what's going to happen when I go through the list? Well, the if part, the while loop, it, uh, initially the conditions will be satisfied, um, and the if will run once, right? Count will be less than i, or sorry, uh, because, yeah, count will be less than i because count is zero and i is one. But then i gets turned into two, and count, it's zero plus something which is bigger than one, right? We have to have the first thing that we're adding to it bigger than one. And then now I have uh, i is not, or count is not less than i, right? Count will be bigger than or equal to i on the next time around, right? We increment it, we go back around again. This is still satisfied, this is still satisfied. This is not satisfied, right? Count is bigger than or equal to i, and it goes to the else. And now the else, again, is going to execute at least the else will execute at least uh, root m minus two over two times, and uh, and again again this is this is and actually and also it, it will uh, execute at most 
uh, root n minus one over two times. Either way, we get we get on this input something which is going to be big O of root m, right? So I get something which is uh, a, a particular input which is less than or equal to, which is going to give a runtime which is less than or equal to a the scalar multiple of root m, right? Some some constant times root m for m large enough past some some point n zero, and so the idea is that because we have, just like with the worst case, we had one particular input, which is omega of m, right, which is bigger than or equal to m, and the worst case is bigger than or equal to any in particular particular uh, runtimes, it has to be bigger than or equal to that, so it has to be omega of m. Here, we are we are getting an input which runs in uh, big O of m, right, less than or equal to a scalar multiple of m. The, be the best case is less than or equal to any particular runtime, so it also has to be in big O of m. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, there's about going back and forth a little bit in the middle there, as as you guys know, uh, we're in four sessions in the last two days. And so I was doing this all day today. And then I had a bunch of teaching afterwards. And I hope this is not I hope this is not too confusing. Um, if it is uh, just just email or write in the comments or something, um, actually, probably better to email because then we'll get a notification. If there's any part of this that didn't make sense, please do email and I'll check it tomorrow uh, morning and make sure that we get any any sort of misunderstandings out of the way, because I, I try not to make videos generally at the end of very long days when I'm when I'm all bleary eyed. But I think I think we got the basic eventually got the basic points across. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have questions, please do email and good luck on the test.